Okay, welcome. Uh, this is the first video of the class for the online class, and what I'm doing here is making a video that's roughly the same as the opening lecture that I would do in class. In the opening class, we talk a little bit about uh, the syllabus, and we talk about the textbooks, and, and then the rest of this lecture, which is mostly just kind of answering the question of what is art appreciation, what's an art appreciation class, what does it mean to appreciate art, um, and like the uh, header says, how does a course teach it? So, um, first of all, uh, in class, the next question to answer is, who am I? So, my name is Alex Stelios Wills, I'm the instructor of this course, and the things that we're going to learn, um, as you're looking at your syllabus over on Canvas, um, you're probably noticing that there's four different types of content in the course. Um, some of the content in the course is going to be art historical, uh, meaning that we will learn about art periods and the time periods and why people made art for those time periods and cultures. Some of the content is going to be uh, design and uh, about the, the way that art is put together, design, um, the visual elements, and design principles. Some of the content of the course is going to be about uh, art materials. We'll talk about the main art mediums, like what is a drawing, what is a painting. And then lastly, uh, also some of what we talk about is more thematic. Uh, I do not organize my course around themes, because you know where themes are really like the idea of what are people trying to say with the art, but instead I'm more interested in the idea of impulses. What are the reasons why people make art? So, um, well, syllabi have to be complicated because there has to be a lot of stuff in them. And yes, syllabi is the plural of syllabus. So, the main point of this course is to learn to appreciate art. And so, I tell this story in class, and I'll tell a, another version of it here. So. When I was an undergraduate at Washington University, uh, which is in St. Louis, the school is very close to the St. Louis Art Museum. And as freshmen, I would make it a, a pretty regular trek. I'd go to the St. Louis Art Museum uh, just to, to see art. And very shortly after arriving at St. Louis, I discovered that they had a great collection of Anselm Kiefer pieces, especially they had this painting, Burning Rods. and I was already kind of interested in Anselm Kiefer, having seen a major show of his while I was in high school. Um, so I was really excited to see this painting. And the other thing about this painting is that it's really very physical, like there's molten lead poured on it, there's uh, sand and straw on it, and other things attached. You can't see them anymore, but there used to be uh, a skate on it and some other things like actual physical objects attached to it. And I was always hoping that I would be there at some moment when, I, when something fell off. I really wanted to see the moment that the skate fell off the painting. So, and this painting is huge. It's, um, I'm pretty sure it's about 11 feet tall, so it's like wall size. And so I would go to the museum and just sit. You know, I'm, I would peruse the museum, I'd sketch, I'd watch, but then I'd always end by sitting in front of this painting for at least 10, 15 minutes, just watching the painting and thinking about it. And so one day, I'm sitting in the museum. That's not me, by the way. I just found this stock photo. Um, I never looked that good. But I'm sitting in the museum, uh, and the museum was arranged basically like this at the time, looking at um, the painting. And to my left is the room where the Chuck Close paintings are, and to my right is the room where the Max Beckman paintings are. And to my left, I can hear the sound of a family coming through the room, and they're seeing the Chuck Closes and the Richard Tuttle, that they may not have noticed the Tuttle, it's pretty subtle. And, um, but they seem very excited, they're really enjoying looking at art. Um, I can tell that they're kids. And then I can see, or I can hear actually, because I'm still looking at the painting, I can hear that they have noticed the opposite room, the room to my right, where the Max Beckmans are, which are very colorful, bright, abstract expression, or not abstract expressions, um, German expressionist paintings, and I can figurative paintings, and I, I can tell that they're excited about them. And I hear the kids, and they're running to go to the other room. So I'm sitting there looking at the painting, and I see these three kids running right in front of me. And like a scene in a movie, the three kids, as they're passing right in front of me, and they're looking at this 
um, painting by Anselm Kiefer. First, the first one, then the second one, and third one. Each one of them turns to their left to see the painting, and each one then stops. They kind of all, as a set, slide to a stop in descending order from the tallest kid, like tallest, the oldest boy, middle boy, youngest girl, all of them sliding to a stop, stopping exactly right in the center of the painting, right in front of me. And they say, wow, oh. And the next thing they say is, dad, dad, what is that? And they turn to their left where the dad is walking into the room and the dad says, damn right, what the hell is that? Um, and the point of this story, and I've told this story since the very first time I taught art appreciation in, um, uh, when, back in Indiana. And the point of this story is that there are the kids and there's the dad, right? One of them knows how to appreciate art. One set knows how to appreciate art. The other doesn't, right? The kids know how to appreciate art. And the father doesn't appreciate, doesn't know how to appreciate art. But which one learned what, right? The kids know how to appreciate art, not because of what they've learned, but because what they haven't learned. The father knows how not to appreciate art because he's learned it as a skill, as a habit. Right? So a lot of what an art appreciation class is about is first just convincing you to not prejudge, to not bring your learning that allows you to dismiss things, but instead to drop those things and be open-minded and just look at what we're looking at. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the structure of this course. So as I said before, um, there are a number of different types of contents in, in my uh, uh, art appreciation course. Most traditional art appreciation courses tend to focus on one thing. There are many art appreciation courses that are very much organized entirely around art historical organization and they just follow a chronology. And there are many art appreciation courses that are very much organized around just mediums. We're just going to talk about each of the different art mediums one at a time. Uh, there are some art appreciation courses that are organized around uh, the big themes of art, you know, man versus nature, um, the search for God, uh, art and power, those kind of themes. And there are also lots of art appreciation courses, or not a lot, but there are a few art appreciation courses that are organized around design and learning about the art elements like line and shape. I try to um, bring all of these together and the way I try to do it is like for each unit there's one art historical period and then I ask myself of during this art historical period what would be the most appropriate art medium for us to cover during this time and then what art impulse and thematic ideas are brought up by that and what design and visual elements ideas are brought up by that. Um, which means that for each unit, each week, we are going to be covering a number of different things all at the same time, but hopefully that it will feel very integrated and connected. Um, so that's the basic structure of my course. Before I get to the very last thing uh, I want to say, I do want to really emphasize, make sure to read over the syllabus, um, read them carefully, and um, make sure to uh, read over the description of Art Assignment A. I will be um, sending out some more announcements specifically about Art Assignment A um, and also about the reading. Um, let me say this about the textbook also before we get to the very end. Um, the, there are two textbooks listed in the book. One is listed as um, the required course, that's uh, the 11th edition of GetLine, and the other is listed as recommended, that's the 8th edition. The way this course works, you could purchase either one. Either the 8th or the 11th edition will be fine. We have to list it that way just so that, because um, it's a lot easier to order textbooks when you list the, the current open edition as being the required book. But um, like if you're going to our bookstore, you will see both of those there available. Um, but you can, you can purchase either one of them. And you will probably find that I picked the 8th edition because it's the one version of this book, the one edition that is available um, as a used copy inexpensively all over the country. So it's relatively easy to find. And on major online retail sites, you can probably find it for about 5 to $6 um, plus $4 shipping. You're also perfectly, it's perfectly okay for you to um, buy an e-version of this book, which could also save you a lot of money. Um, 